All right, let's get into the word of God. Will you turn your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 13? And this is not where I, you know, um, this is just a great way to start. Acts chapter 13. So in the first service, we will be praying this month for business, new businesses and business expansion. And if you feel that that's something you need, you want to come into that. The second thing is that in the fourth service, I'm teaching about getting clarity, overcoming confusion about the future. Hallelujah. I'm going to just move through this teaching because these services, the, the, these services this month up to Wine Press are not just normal service. We call them pre Wine Press Encounter services. Let's go quickly. Um, Acts chapter 13 in verse 36. The Bible, so the, this is the New Testament evaluation or summary of the man called David. The Bible says this, very powerful. It says, for David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on asleep and was laid unto his father and saw corruption. I wanted to notice how God said David lived his life. The Bible says, and David served the will of God. It's, that scripture is something I'm hoping in my life. That at the end of my life, this is what I want someone, God, to say about not someone, God. I want God to be able to say, after he has done the will of God. And, and the reason I'm saying so is this. Many people live. But many people waste their whole life. In the Bible, I don't know if you know this. There's a man in the Bible that lived up to 969 years. Who knows his name? His name is Methuselah. Methuselah lived 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 969. You know what shocked me about Methuselah? By the time they summarized the life of Methuselah, it was summarized in what? Two verses. Methuselah lived for 969 years and had children male and female and that was all and you have someone like moses that lived up to 120 and yet five books of the bible are devoted to him i'm like this is incredible you have you have someone like paul that lived paul died around maybe the age of 60 something maybe 70 and yet to third of the books of the new testament were devoted to paul were written by paul I'm like, this, what's going on here? Then someone lives 969 years. And the reason I'm saying so is this. There is a way you can live your life that it's wasted. And many people today are gradually, they may not know it, they are gradually wasting their life. Let me tell you something. It's just because we're kind. When people die, sometimes on their tombstone, there's really nothing to write than they were born and they died. All those things that is a generous man. He this and this. Most of them is just lies. He just got the next to and copy what he said. But the question is this. Are you going to, what is your life going to be? Because it's a new year right now. Are you going to invest your life? Or are you going to waste your life? Nobody intentionally says, I want to waste my life. So, why do people waste their life? Wasting your life is a function of not investing your life. So, if you're not investing your life and living intentionally, the tendency that you're wasting your life is very high. What does waste look like? Do you have my conflicts? you have the ball? Give me the ball and the conflicts, yeah? Just the ball right now. I just want just the ball, yeah? Where's the conflicts? Give me the sugar, give me the milk. No, just the sugar. Okay, is that the sugar and the milk? I don't know why. Okay, maybe they want people to really see it. So, so I want to show you something. So I want to have some conflicts. I need the camera's help to get here. This is all the conflicts I have. You need to come on the stage. You can see from there. This is all the conflicts I have. Just see all the conflicts I have. Just like this small. It's small quantity. Can you see? Is it fine? Oh, you can see the small quantity. Now, I want to push sugar. And I go, this is all the sugar keeps it. And I go, ah, how did you feel? Ah, 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 ah. 
Ah, uh-uh. why did he go? Ah, uh? you're wasting. What is wasting? Wasting does not mean that you're not doing the right thing. It might just be you're putting too much attention on the right thing. The, the, problem, the problem is not the sugar I put inside. But this sugar is too much for this amount of what? Conflicts. If, if I just put two or three cubes, if I just put two cubes, this is okay. Even if I put one cube, it's okay. But when I go ahead and put 10, 20, 10 15 cubes, and that's how many of us are living your life. It's not as if the things you put your time in is not great. But you're just putting too much time in football. You're just putting too much time on Instagram. You're just putting too much time on what does not matter. So, from God's perspective, why are you so wasteful? There are two kinds of waste. Waste is that, you know, I'm taking the sugar itself. So, if you see me taking the sugar and throwing it away, you could be like, why are you so wasteful? Because that's food. But that's what some people do. They just throw away their life without thinking about it. But some people don't do that. What they do is, that, so some people just throw away their time. For example, they just throw away their time. One of the things you can do this year is that every day before you sleep, write four things you achieved. You'll be surprised how much you achieved nothing. That the first thing will be nothing. The second thing will be nothing. Third thing, nothing. The fourth thing is nothing. And that's how people throw away their life. They just do nothing. But some people, some people do something, but they just put too much into what is too little. It's good to watch television. But by the time you watch television for five hours in a day, there's something wrong with your destiny. I'm telling you, by the time you watch television five hours in a day, there's something wrong with, can I be honest with you? Listen, literally in a week, maybe I will watch TV. I'll sit in front of a TV and watch TV maybe one hour. All the time I will watch combined. could be one hour. And there are weeks I do not watch the television for 30 minutes. And there are times I will just turn on my phone because I don't want to see the... I don't want social media. The question is this, what will make this year different for you? Because you spend all of this time on Instagram, you spend all of this time here. What time do you spend with Jesus? What time do you spend on your dreams for the future? What time do you spend with the kids? Why is it important to leave? So, why should you waste your life? So, I'm only asking you, this is the first question. Did you waste last year? The next question, one week is gone. Did you waste it? What did you do with the last one week? Then the third question, do you have a plan not to waste next this week? This is very powerful. And see, why is it important for us not to waste? Number one, because a wasted life will lead to regret. You would, when you see people that waste their life, you'll find that they're very unhappy. And the reason why is that their heart is always filled with regrets. What I should have done that I didn't do. What I'm doing that I should not be doing. The Bible speaks about Esau. Esau is a classic example. Esau wasted his opportunity. He ate, he ate and forgot his birthright. And the Bible says he sought it with tears all his life and never found it back. The second thing why you should not waste is this. What kind of example will you leave to your, to your siblings? You know, there's a man in the Bible <laughs> called Lamech. I don't know. Have you heard that name before, Lamech? I mean, most of you don't know the name of Lamech. Nobody won't be as Lamech. You know why? Because he was the first person in the Bible that had two wives. He was the first person in the Bible that had what? Two wives, Lamech. Just imagine how you become a good example of a bad thing. Other people were known for prayer, like Elijah. Other people were known for faith, like Abraham. Was Lamech known for polygamy? But the, this is why you should not waste your life. Because the question is this: What example will you leave? I always want to ask you a question. 
When your children grow up, will they be able to talk about your prayer life and your faith? Will your partner be able to talk about your faith and your prayer life? Or there will be no example to live? Some people are known for eating. What a terrible thing they're known for. Because you need to ask yourself, how do I make sure that this year is not wasted? That this year is what invested. And the beauty about investing a year is that once you invest a year, you reap into the future. Once you waste a the year, there's nothing to reap in the future. And that's why some people, as they grow older, their life is more beautiful. You know why? Because when they were younger, they kept investing the years. So they were eating returns and returns and returns. And sometimes they grow older, their life becomes more difficult because they were busy wasting the years and they have to leave and cope with all the waste that they have labored for. Glory to God. I, I mean, you, you stay at home and you sleep some extra hours on Sunday. What? You're wasting. That time should be invested in God's service. Glory to God. So, so how do I make sure I live intentionally? How do I make sure I don't waste my life? The first thing is to, is to discover and pursue God's purpose for your life. You know, you must know something. Life was not your idea. Life was a gift given to you. Your life is an assignment from God. It, see, and that's why at the end of life, what happened? The same way when you're giving school assignments, you will come to class and they will say, submit your assignment and they, what? they will grade it. The same way, at the end of your life, guess what happens to you? What happens to you is that your assignment is also graded by God. And God tells you that this is what I hope you will become. This is what I hope you will achieve. But this is what you achieved. The question is this. Are you even aware that you have an assignment from God? Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah said, I'm a child. God said, you don't understand. Before you were born, I ordained you as a prophet. He said, there's an assignment on your life. Have you even discovered your assignment from God? I know you're a banker, but banking is not your assignment. There is a divine assignment on your life. Stop wasting away. Stop wasting away. There's a divine assignment on your life. And some of you, because you don't know there's a divine assignment on your life, you keep copying other people. In fact, the reason why some people are not happy and things are not working together is that because you are not in the place of what your assignment. Jesus Christ said, I've come to do the will of my father. He was so clear about his assignment. Read the scripture we spoke about David. Bible says about David, this is what the Bible says. David, after David had done the will of God. The question is, have you found your assignment? Can you say clearly that I found God's assignment for my life and I'm walking in it? Or is it a guesswork? I'm just moving from place to place to place to place to place and I don't know what God wants me to do. And how do you, someone says, so how do I find God's assignment for my life? The listen, listen to me. God's assignment, it's, what, it's already in you. It's for you to pay attention. And how do you pay attention? The word that comes to mind is the word consecration. The word that comes to mind is what consecration. The reason why we don't discover God's assignment for our life is that we are filled with our own assignments. I remember when God called me to be a pastor. Being a pastor full time was not what I prayed for. It was not what I even looked to do. I had imagination I wanted to serve God in a higher capacity. But I did not want to be this. I remember for months, I struggled. I struggled. I said, Lord, so I began to negotiate. One, Lord, you come to be a full-time pastor. Now, not just that. Now, you're calling me to start a church. I said, please, I do not want to start a church. Because I don't know what's that. You know, it was just a lot of conversation in my mind. But you know what? Looking back, I'm grateful I took the step. You know why I'm grateful I took the step? Because when I eventually I made up my mind to start the church, I have three, two, two other friends. I mean, they're other friends. But there were two these other friends that told me, they said, wow, God bless you, Pastor Bolaji. He said that we too, we have called to start churches. He said that you started right now. You're just inspired me. One was going to Canada. 
the other one said, ah, as I'm going to Canada, my goal is that, first of all, you've started. I'll be supporting you financially. I said, oh, thank you very much. He said, that, but I'm going to start the church because I also have a call. I said, thank you. And one of them was in Lagos. He said, that, don't worry. In the next one year, I just want to gather some money. I'll start. The one in Canada, since he left Nigeria, I've never heard from him. And I know he has not started a church. The one in Nigeria, one day I was at the airport and I saw him. His name is Yomi. I said, hey, we high-fived. And he said, ah, I'm still working on starting the church. I said, excuse me. The reason why is that there's no better time to do what God wants you to do but now. Now. I said, I said you're starting off starting the church. When we have gone so far. We've started church, we forgot it. We're starting other things. Because many of you are looking for the best time to step out to do the will of God. There's no better time than what? Than now. Resolution without action is useless. What is God calling you to do? What relationship? Many of you are in relationship that God is asking you to step out of. Some of you are, there are relationships that God is asking you to step into. Some of you, there are leadership roles, seven roles that God is challenging you to step into. The Bible says, the Bible says, and David served his generation after the will of God. And you know the major thing? The major way to really serve God is this. And to follow the will of God is consecration. What is consecration? Set apart. It's a, it's a big word, but it's got the, the, the set apart. See, once you realize that I'm not like other people, I have got a summit on my life. I want to set apart my life. Can I get the plates? Give me, give me the plates, please. You can, you can take all of this away. You can take all of this away. All the, give me all the plates. Don't bring one by one. Just all the plates. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Set apart. All these plates are from my house. This is a plastic plate. Is it, I'm not sure if it's plastic or it's look plastic though. Right? And this will be what my children used to eat. It's nice. I use it to eat sometimes. I think it's a nice place. It's nice. It's comfortable. You can mess it up. It's very big. And this is what people, some of the people used to eat in my house. But when we have guests that will not bring out this kind of plates, you know what this is? My plate is not even here because I have my own plate. Guess what? The plate has been set aside. It's not for everyday use. When you are consecrated to God, I'm not like the girl on social media. I'm not like the woman in UBA. I've been set aside. Stop commonizing what God has put value on. The problem is this. You, you, God has set you aside. But you still want to leave like the plastic. That's the problem. You still want to compare yourself to the plastic. You still want to compare. So you feel like, uh, what, what are girls my age doing? But you're not girls your age. What are moms my age doing? You're not moms your age. What are people like me that are 45? But you're not people like you that are 50 doing. You have been set aside. Why not embrace the fact that you have been set aside? And that's where it starts from. When you begin to say things like, others may, I cannot. And the reason I cannot is because what I have been what set aside. Someone says, why do you give so much time in prayer? Because my vessel is different. You are a plastic vessel. But I have been set aside. Listen, the person that carries oil does not play. I don't know if you got it. If you see someone carrying and say, I'm selling oil. Oh. People that carry oil don't play. People that carry egg don't play. When you carry nothing, you can be playing up and down. But when you carry some, something, huh, you, you, you will be careful how you play because any small thing, what you carry can pour away. 
Some people can some people can spend all their life and spend all their life on money and spend all their life pursuing finances and spend all their life pursuing relationship because they carry nothing. But I've been set aside. There's, there's value on my life. There's value on my life. Someone says, how come you don't step out except to pray? Because I'm carrying something. Before I come out of the house, I need to bakush the kaparata. I'm carrying. There's something I'm carrying. Stop leaving as if you have not been set aside. Look at anyone say I've been set aside. You know, someone, someone invited me and said, we wanted to come to this place and describe the place. So I said, where is that? He said, but you, you, leave, you leave just by the place. Is that come you don't know? I said, well, I don't do a lot of socials. He said, why? I said, because I, I said, most socials on Saturday. I'm a pastor. That's where I invest a lot of time. Either praying, reading the Bible, just resting my spirit, resting my body. So for Sunday. Someone said, oh, why? Is that how you spend your Saturdays? Because I have been set. Up. I don't feel bad. I just feel special. When you know this, some people cannot date you because they are plastic. And, and you wonder why they broke up because they have to broke up because you have treasure. The challenge is that in your foolishness, you even agree to date them. It was mercy that brought you a breakup. Because I have been once set aside. Listen to me. How many of you have compared yourself to some people 10 years ago and you felt stupid that at a point in your life I ever compared myself to you? The reason why is that you thought you were like them. You did because you kept looking like we're age mates. You kept looking like we both studied accounting. We both stay in Ikorodu. We are both in Egbeda. We are both in Aja. But the truth is that we look the same but we have been set as on our plates. But plates get category. You, you need to go into this year knowing that I have been set I said, oh my God, I don't know if I'm talking to you. I have been set. I said, when they don't understand your dreams, there's no way they can understand your dream because plastic and glass not be made. Hallelujah. Plastic and glass not be made. When you share your dreams with them, they'll be like, oh, you're so nosy, you're so audacious, you're so this, you're so that. You say, I understand because from your background, from your material, from what you will make, you can understand what it means to be made like this. If I, when, when I brought that and I said, so this was, so say, is this a plate? Because you cannot even understand from some background how this can be a plate. Once they cannot understand your goals, don't talk too much. They are not meant to be part of it. I have been set aside. Look for materials that are similar to your material. Hallelujah. Look for what? Materials that are submitted to. But, but the thing is this. Once you are set aside, my plate and my cutlery is my plate and my cutlery sometimes my kids become careless and they want to pick it up and our the stuff that helps us to say oh but that's daddy stuff he set aside sometimes some things want to hijack your emotions let the angel in you tell them no not me I've been set aside sometimes something want to tell you that you know and listen sometimes things that are set aside are not used frequently but when they are used, it's a statement. When you were growing up, did your father have a car that was special? That car was not what they took to work Monday to Friday. But when it's time to go to church, and when that day wears its best, then he says, give me the key, give me the key to 505 ER Evolution. You know, or 504 this and this. Then that new wears and says, sit, and, and that's the only car that had AC back then. Then it turns it on. <laughs> but it's not the other car you used to take to school because that car has been set aside. The problem is this. You keep treating yourself as a commoner when God has set you aside. And, and that's why this wine press is essential. Because it's a meeting for those that have been set aside. And we're saying that before they tell you what you are not, come. Come and hear what I'm telling you. What God has made you. Because I've been set aside, I need seasons of consecration. Because others may, I may not. O others may, I may not. Wow. Wow. So, wine press for me is a place of encounter. Because let me tell you something. 
The world has a way to tell you who you're not. They tell you every day. You need God to tell you who you are. And the reason why is that many of you are carrying labels of what goodness that you are. The world says you're useless. The world says there's no future. The world says you have no future ambition. The world says this and this and this. But what God does say, but that's why we come to wine press. Because in wine press, you hear God's voice, oh ha, when God speaks into your spirit. Oh, shapala mana. Glory to God. I say glory to God. The thing is that you need to enter this year knowing that I've been set aside. Others may see them and say, I don't go to church. They say, I pray. I, I don't do prayer. It's okay. You know, I can compare me to you. Because I know me. I've been set aside. Stop comparing yourself to what is not. I, I, you, know, you know, even me myself, I feel so bad because when I was young, you know, there were some people I prayed to be like. I felt that, I, I felt if I could see my future, God would say, why are you insulting yourself? Because looking back, how could I pray to be like this? But I did not realize I was set aside. And when you're set aside, listen, once God has set you aside, then you now have to behave like someone that is set aside. There are things set aside people do. I mean, look at 21 days fasting and prayer. We are consecrating ourselves knowing that we have been set aside. From tomorrow, Tomorrow, see, our matching orders are different from the matching orders. Some people have said that, hey, if this person doesn't win presidency, I'll leave the country. We don't talk like that. Because our matching orders are from heaven. We operate under a total open, he open heaven. It doesn't matter who wins or who doesn't win. We're going to come out better on the other side. I've been set aside. Some people say, I don't know what this year looks like. I, I just hope it's okay. See, I can't talk like that. Because I understand, I've been set aside. I'm premium value. Do you understand me? I'm VVIP. Praise God. I'm premium ticket. Praise God. I, I have been set aside. Your husband might be a small talker. Say, honey, you don't talk like that. Because you have been. Even if you're not set aside, the fact that you're married to me, you have been set aside. Because if the two become one, if I'm going, you have to come with me. I've been set aside. And, and this period of white press. Oh, shut up. Yeah. It's a period of hearing what the Spirit is saying. It's a period. You know why I love my press? It's the encounters. It's the, it's the, it's the power of the... It's what, what infuses my spirit with. My God, I have been set aside. I'm sorry if I don't behave like you. I'm sorry to disappoint you if you don't behave like your other church, but this church has been set aside. Someone says, you're going to spend all that money for your conference? That's the burden of Buddha set aside. We don't do regular things. We don't do normal things. God takes us to deep depths where nobody has been to. That's why our life is full of grace and glory. Because I have been set aside. When I wake up in the morning, if I've been set aside, I give time to the one that sets me aside. You see, others can wake up in the morning and go ahead. But no, we have to go to the next we wake up and we go to the next level. <laughs> we wake up, we go to the next level. And when we're done, we now come and talk to them. They now wonder, why are we so wise? Because we came from the next level. Because we have been set. as Other people can wake up in the morning and they jump on their phone. But when we wake up in the morning, they say, why do you speak that way? Because we come from the next level. Berando, Sabali, Rahate. What language is that? The next level language. We're from the next dimension. We're ahead of other people. Close. <laughs> oh, glory to God. We're ahead. They wonder in business, why are you positioning this way? They wonder, why is your strategy this way? What have you seen? Like, That's, how did you see that? Because we see from the next dimension. Why? We have been set aside. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your year. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your year. <laughs> welcome to your year. I don't know what they're saying, but this is your year. This is it. This is the year you've been waiting for. This is the year you've been waiting for. This, this is the year you have been waiting for. The law of divine timing is working in your favor. This is the year you have been waiting for. Praise God. You know, I'm saying this to you. Listen to what the Spirit of God put in my heart just now. The more confident you are that this is your head, the faster it will happen to you. 
And you need to be resolute and say, this is my year. This is my year. This is my year. I don't know about you, but this is my year. I don't know about them, but this is our year. Praise God. It's our year of undeniable exploits. And what? Laughter. It will be laughter upon laughter. Oh, kapo shaka. It will be laughter upon laughter upon laughter. It will be undeniable exploits. Can I tell you something? People that your name has not showed up on certain lists in your companies. In international head office, in Germany, in Sweden, in Switzerland, in Europe, in, in Egypt, wherever it is, your name will start popping up. You have been seeing names of young entrepreneurs across Africa. I'm believing that this year your name is going to pop up. Your name is going to pop up on CNN, pop up on Fox. Your name is going to pop up in international space in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me handle this testimony. Last two weeks, one young guy in our church travels a lot. Eventually, he came to see me because I just know him by phone. I didn't know him physically. He's 28. And he just said, Pastor, why do you want to say thank you for all the teachings and prayers? I'm a changed life. Then we began to talk about his business. He, just, he said, just to let you know, he said, this year alone, last year, 2022, we did it over 100 billion. 28-year-old. He said, in my sector, I'm one of the highest import I'm one of the highest people that bring forex income back into the country. He said, last year alone, we bought $150 million as repetition of income back into the country. He said, the CPN was so impressed. There was a retreat for all bank MDs, and the CPN governor came to tell me to address them. 28-year-old person. You know why I love my press? God wants to expand. You think you can dream, Abby? God wants to expand your mind so that you will know that he has not started. Because until you become a reference point of answer prayers, God will not stop. Why I love my press is that, you know, me, I'm coming and say, God, expand my mind. When, when the guy spoke to me, uh -huh. how old are you? 48. He said, no, 20, 20. I'm going to be 28 as pastor. Huh? Huh? I said, what's your, he said, this is we're projecting 200 billion. Uh huh? Uh huh? So I, I was with one, one of these bank directors, a bank, one of the biggest bank directors, one of the directors was with me. So when I introduced him, he has an account with them. The director said, no, it's not, you should, it's your father that owns the company. He said, no. He said, my father's company is one, two, three, four. He said, oh, I know that one. He said, that's my father. He said, this is my company. He said, yeah, the one? This young? But that's why I love God. Where it takes people that are insignificant, people that have no name. You know, some of you, you have big, big names. Family name is Thomas. Well, we know you. You know, family name is, family name is, you know, the Jones. We know you. We, we, family name is uh, Obasanjo. We know you. But some names are not popular like you do. There's no significant one. Have you heard of any significant one? <laughs> so, God, so, if there's no sig God needs to choose one. So, when the other obstacles don't pray, I understand because even their pedigree can work for them. But me, us. <laughs> Hallelujah. God uses the weak things of this world <laughs> to conform the wise. God uses the weak things of this world to. So, so I say, Lord, no name. Start with me. No name. Start with me. Is there someone here? Someone here? This fasting and prayer, you need to make up your mind. And say 21 days. One of the things I want to pray for is that God will expand you. And as he expands you, allow him to. Then one press. Those that watch online, be in the atmosphere of faith and power. Let's stand up and pray.